Hello and welcome to the Reference Point Podcast. I am your host, Paulo, and I am joined by my two fellow avatars, Matthew and Anthony. That's us. Hey, how's That's it going? That's us. You know it. So today, we're going to be talking about Moon Knight. Moon Knight. So, Day and night. <laughs> Moon Knight, Mr. Knight, Arthur Harrow, general spoilers, everything. We're going to talk about it all. But first, we just want to take some time to address the passing of two comic legends, Neil Adams and George Perez. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. it's, it's very, very important that we address this um, since the last recording they did pass away. And uh, we had, we were, you know, we were grateful enough to have met Neil Adams at um, Fan Expo yeah. Canada a couple of years back. It was really cool getting to talk to a legend, being able to even see him draw because he was doing a few sketches too for people. Like, Absolutely. It's it's something really mesmerizing and so many amazing. iconic covers he's done before of batman all of dc even x-men just oh like yeah he, he was he's kind of behind sort of the image of batman and neil adams yeah. like when you think batman you probably are thinking of one of his one of his artworks if you know batman you, you've seen his art that's absolutely for sure. and, and then for george perez yep. you know he revolutionized what? dc and marvel and marvel what's not to say about the man apparently he was one of the nicest people working in the industry and it's avengers a like uh, justice, justice league, league versus avengers comic too the, mm -hmm. the crossover my my personal favorite hulk future and perfect one of it one of my favorite storylines just wow yeah you were lucky enough to uh, to submit to george perez we were uh, for a cgc signing yeah. cgc for those who don't know uh, they basically grade and encapsulate uh, comic books mm -hmm. and they had a, a signing uh, for george perez and anthony was lucky enough to, to submit two copies of future imperfect yeah, one and number two. one and two exactly um and then he was going to have another signing uh where cgc was raising money for for his family mm -hmm. after we got the very unfortunate news of his illness and um and you know we were all going to submit to that i was looking forward to submitting uh, yeah. spider-man hobgoblin lives number one um but unfortunately the signing had to get canceled and uh, anyway so just a, a bit of a bummer um uh, yeah. but i think it's just important to to address the um yeah the absolute monumental work that they've uh, that they've contributed to comics so there are going to be people that are going to be remembered forever and honestly it's very well deserved absolutely for sure uh but uh you know moving on from that um Let's talk Moon about Knight. something a bit, yeah, a little bit more positive, I guess. Uh, Moon I mean, how much more positive can we get? <laughs> well, I, 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 my thoughts are very positive it, on the show. So. I, meant, I meant the tone of the show, you know? Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> there, there's a bit of dark moments in the show. You Absolutely, know? Like, yeah. There's some very dark stuff in the show, but it's All cool. right, so first off, let's do some, like, non-spoiler talk. Like, what did you think? Overall feelings, like... Yeah, and absolutely. You know. uh, also, um, for those watching on YouTube, uh, there's going to be some timestamps uh, in the video encoded, uh, so you can follow along mm -hmm. uh, a little bit, uh, a little yeah. bit uh, more seamlessly. And again, if you're also watching on YouTube, don't forget to uh, to comment below what you thought on Moon Knight. So, uh, general non-spoilers. Uh, Anthony, what do you you want to take this away? I, I I enjoyed the show. Okay. Um, it wasn't perfect. I'm not going to pretend like I loved every single minute of it. Agreed. But it was just an overall good time, you know, like. I found maybe uh, the finale was a bit quick. They could they sh they could have made it a bit longer the show. I could I agree with that more. Yeah, because the finale was actually like the shortest episode of the bunch. Yeah, which was crazy and to me. Like, like <laughs> and episode five happens. Not to say what happens in it, but episode five happens. And you're like, wow, where's this gonna go? And you realize, oh wait, there's one episode left. Like, oh okay. Yeah, but that seems to be a common issue I feel with these Marvel shows. You know. Yeah, yeah they just yeah. have this great sort of setup, and then they just kind of rush the ending or they fumble it in some yeah, way they're very yeah. front loaded and then when you get to the ending anyway we'll talk about that more in the spoiler yeah. section yeah. but i do agree uh with anthony mm -hmm. uh, but i do feel like the finale was able to kind of wrap itself up, wrap <laughs> itself up <laughs> cleaner a little bit in a more yeah. clean way than, than i'd say some of the other marvel yeah, yeah definitely that we've seen, so i mean i just gotta say right off the bat oscar isaac as moon knight absolutely he's my wow. favorite casting like this I'm, guy <sighs> i was impressed to say the least like just I want him in everything now. Like yeah. I just love him as an actor. I think his performance is Emmy worthy. Genuinely, I think it's it's deserving of that. At least a nomination. Mm -hmm. uh, w what he does when he switches between Mark and Steven. Steven. Yeah, Mark and Steven. That, that shot of him, it's like he's looking <laughs> in the mirror, and it just whoa, it's like wow. Okay, that is cool. Like, yeah. Wow. He That's brings a, he brings his A game uh, to the to the show one hundred percent. So, yeah. uh, but I think the, the performances across the board are, are wonderful. Mm -hmm. Ethan uh, Hawke was good too. Although I'd say his character. I wish he had a bit more to do. Yeah. You know? I, I feel like he was very much not... Like, he's not an important villain. Like, you know how, like... Yeah. He's not really there for Moon Knight. Like, you know how, mm -hmm. like, with 
uh, Jeff Bridges and Iron Man or like Thanos. Yeah, and they're always sure. in it for the characters. There's always a stake with with the, uh, Harold. I always felt like he was just there f- to fight Moon Knight. He didn't really impact I, the character all that much. I, would disagree. I kind of disagree. Yeah, I disagree because with that. he has a lot of connections with Khonshu. Mm-hmm. I hope I didn't mispronounce that. One hundred percent. But he has connections with Khonshu, and it, like, right, it but ties that's not in Moon Knight. To his past. Yeah, well, I think thematic. I think thematically. Uh, a lot of the moral and ethical dilemmas that are at play in the show, uh, mm-hmm. both internally and throughout the internally for uh, Mark Spector and yep. uh, for the plot as a whole, uh, do get addressed. Um, I do feel like, you know, a film like, let's say, Minority Report, which is kind of dealing <laughs> with similar ideas, yeah. explores those themes uh, in more compelling and kind of like direct ways. Um, for sure. But yeah, I think the show. Um, I, I think the villain does kind of relate to that in some way, but we'll talk more about that. I a just little bit later. I wish he had a bit more to do, you know. Like I think, yeah, I yeah, think I he was so. in the background a lot of times, and he wasn't like I don't know. Ethan Hawke is great, but I just wish the writing was a little more uh, solid. For I, him. I'm happy that Ethan Hawke even just kind of decided to join a Marvel property because he's yeah. been not quite adamant, but he was one of the actors in the past who's kind of voiced his disinterest yeah, he, uh, with he, the MCU. He, he, he didn't have good stuff to say, but, you know, he probably needed to buy a house, so we called him <laughs> and now he's here. <laughs> but uh, I could totally see him reading the script to the show and being like, oh, okay, this is actually quite different. And, but, yeah. to be honest, I, even when they had cast Oscar Isaac, I had I had thought the same thing, because if if you guys remember, when he finished episode 9, he basically, they asked him, you want to do another Star Wars, Star Wars episode movie? 9, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah he said, when do you want to do another Star Wars movie? And what did he say? If I need to buy a house. <laughs> and then I saw like a couple months later, he's cast as Moon Knight. I'm like, oh, he's going back to the big scale projects like Marvel Studios. It's like it's not bigger than Star Wars and is now. So I, I think Oscar Isaac is really just a huge nerd at, at heart. Like, yeah, like, he's, he's been through how many like kind of pop culture properties now? So like, we said Star Wars. Oh, he's been Fox X-Men. Fox X-Men as another kind another of Egyptian, Egyptian character. Egyptian <laughs> character. <laughs> he was in the Sucker Punch from Zack Snyder, I remember. Oh, he was? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, also, of course, uh, Drive. <laughs> Spy- <laughs> Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse in, that mid- yeah. cr- in the, excuse me, the after credit scene of voicing 2099. And mm-hmm. I'm really excited for Across the Spider-Verse. So. Of course. He was in Dune. I definitely didn't Google that. Dune, another <laughs> nerd property. It wasn't Dune. Dune. How do we not think of Dune? <laughs> um, yeah. There's, I had one more off the top of my head, but now I kind of forgot it. So but whatever. Point is, this guy is King all of over the place. But even like I've seen him in interviews and like he has like the Moon Knight statues yeah. in the back of him. I'm like, that's so that's, yeah. that's cool. That's I just, cool. I love we that. just love him. We love him so <laughs> much. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think the show, What I lo- in, a, in a non-spoiler kind of way, what I really love about this show especially is that on one, the, on like on your first viewing, you could watch it one way. Mm-hmm. And then on a the yeah. second viewing... Uh, having gained all the knowledge that you did in, I would say, episodes four, five, and six, mm-hmm. uh, you can kind of look back on the rest of the show and appreciate it uh, more and pick out things yeah. that you didn't there's, notice. There's a really good progression to it. I found, like, I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. For sure. Uh, so. I actually really enjoy this. Like, mm-hmm. see, I have no idea who Moon Knight is or what he does. I just know that um, he fought Dracula or, or a werewolf one time. Werewolf the by by night, yeah. And, um, you know, he, there's a lot of funny memes of him swearing. Which none of them are real, guys. Those, there's a, those are not real comics. <laughs> Please don't confuse but them. <laughs> all, all, that, all this to say, um, I really enjoyed what I saw. I mm-hmm. liked the ending a lot. Yeah. I thought it was like, it was like that sort of action-packed, like, no-holds-barred thing where it's like you had basically a kaiju fight and then you had also a ground fight at the same time, mm-hmm. which is what I dug the most. Some people would say that's spoilers. <laughs> anyway, spoilers. <laughs> spoilers. No, but off. actually, no, but you brought up something interesting about the comics. Like, here's the thing with Moon Knight. I've always been very, as a huge comic book fan, I've only ever really been familiar with Moon Knight through his guest appearances in other titles, like yeah. Spider-Man, let's yeah. say. <laughs> and I've always been very, very familiar with the, the physical appearance of the character. I've always loved kind of like the images, the drawn images of Moon Knight. But I sure. never really actually knew anything about the character. So... Watching the show was like really eye opening for and me. Mitch Dreds did a run with, uh, I think Tom King, right, with Moon Knight. No, you're thinking, no, that's Mr. Miracle. <laughs> no, 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 no. He did. Uh, no, uh, Mitch thinking... Dreds did do it because I, I specifically remember his no, art. You're thinking of Lemire and Smallwood on Moon Knight, which is what the show took inspiration from. Oh, okay. But the art is very similar. Yeah, exactly. Moon Knight is just like 
It's character. I'm not gonna pretend like I read him every day or when I right, buy every Moon Knight, but like I know enough. I feel like right. I fully I know nothing. learned. <laughs> I, yeah, my, f- myself included. I <laughs> really felt like my knowledge. I'm gonna was be very honest with you guys. Yeah. This show works better if you know nothing, because the stuff that you do know right isn't really adapted too well sometimes. Well, not too well. I wouldn't say well. It just you just say you didn't know faithfully. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, 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 no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's fair to say that because through a lot of a lot of the Marvel properties, they they they, they take they, they pick and choose what they feel is relevant for the story they, they want to tell. Point is, uh, a lot wasn't relevant to them to say the least. Okay, all right, excellent. But so. they're still open to like, because let's say his first run by Sinkevich and uh, and uh, I forgot his name, the writer. Uh, but by Sinkevich, he drew it. Okay. That Editor first put in the, uh, the the name of the uh, there you go. The, yes, uh, <laughs> writer, please. I'm so sorry. But yeah, in that first run, it's a lot of just m- adventures of Moon Knight. Right. And it's him with Marlene, Frenchie, and uh, what's uh, the... He's he's in the show, the other guy. I forgot his name also. Oh, this is embarrassing. Editor, uh, put <laughs> the name. <laughs> he, he's in the show too. He's uh, he, the gold man. Okay. But it's ah. like a lot of adventures with them. And the show kind of implied that those already happened. Oh, but, except Marlene has become Layla now, so they kind of changed that character. They changed her whole name. Right, right. Okay. But well, it's always the same character at its core. Like it's really the same character. And in the comic books, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think Stephen is like a, a millionaire as well, a billionaire, a billionaire something yeah. like that. And there's also a third alter named Jake Lockley, who, who, um, he's just kind of like an all-around cab driver. He's a nice guy, you know. He's the average Joe who's got the, um, a bit of a violent tendency. A bit of an edge, you know. And. But the point is, he always has his eyes on the street for like a character like that. Yeah. So. All right. So yeah, spoilers because it's getting really difficult. Yeah. Spo- <laughs> so we'll, we'll switch over to spoilers. Um, so uh, if you don't want to know any spoilers, you know now's the time to log off. Come back later and. Um, yeah. yeah. Watch okay. the show. Watch all six episodes. Six. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Six episodes. There's so many shows to keep yeah. track of. Uh, yeah. Watch all six and then come back. So. For sure. You know, we uh, we mentioned the little Jake Lockley a little <laughs> before. Yeah. We're trying to tiptoe around the idea that there is this third personality. Uh, and I love, by the way, the way they sprinkled it's like him throughout the show. The fact is, the first, the first episode, you realized that the date with the girl was actually Jake and it's not Mark, which is so funny. Wait, what do you yeah. mean? Jake Lockley... Is the one who organized the date with the girl, not yeah, Mark. Because you have to think of this, right? If oh, Mark is married, Steve's an idiot. Steve Steve's didn't know not what was an happening. Idiot. Steve didn't know what was going on, man. The and poor so guy. it's Jake because poor bloke. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't catch. You didn't catch that. that? And then yeah. episode three has a bunch of killings and says, "Who did that?" He's like, Steven, it wasn't me." I mean, that yeah, was pretty that, odd. That I, that I remember. Yeah. I think that was the moment where a lot of people started to question, "Oh my god, wait a minute, that's is there where a third it locked person?" In for me, and I'm like, "He's in the show." Wow. Okay, they they I, did it. I honestly got thought that it was just Steve going like nuts. No. Like he was like sort of <laughs> becoming violent. Like so, like because my guess for the show was going to end with Mark becoming more of a pacifist. While Steve becomes more violent, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, that's that that's where I thought it was going. That would completely been wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, Steve, Steve does get some pretty uh, some pretty badass you know fight moves. In Everyone that, in knows because we always speak week to week. But I didn't really like Mr. Knight at first. I thought he was like, yeah, you didn't. I, I always liked the comic one because he's like, you know, a tough badass. You know, <laughs> just a typical. Uh, detective you'll get the work done and this one like he's in the first episode, he's like ah oh, come on come on come on come on that's right come on he's <laughs> dead cool. pu- he, he does one punch he's like yay I, that's that's what i loved about the character it was the total opposite of uh, of, of yeah. mark's moon knight you know yeah. so like, i you, love that i didn't like that he was just a joke by the last episode, they gave him that cool fight scene. I'm like, okay, this is awesome. This is what I wanted from the beginning. Yeah. So, so. made me appreciate the jokiness a bit more. I'm still not going to say I love it, but, you know. Yeah, I feel the same way. It's like, I, at first, it was like it was funny the first time. Then I'm like, okay, can you get a little more serious, please? Yeah. Especially in the third episode where it's like he's Moon Knight. He's about to punch a dude. Then he transforms. He says a joke, and then he transforms back. It's like, I, I don't know. I, I wasn't big on that. What I will say, though, is I think the whole split personality kind of... Um, not subplot it's more or less the main plot almost but um that whole element of the show to me was easily the most compelling i thought for sure action scenes would be so much cooler not knowing exactly what happens in them because we cut to uh we we, steven basically has no memory of what's going on because 
off camera we're basically cutting to mark wreaking re- wrecking havoc right yeah. and then we cut back to steven who poor guy is just so oblivious <laughs> like, what, what just happened? <laughs> what's going on so i love that i love how your brain needs to fill in uh the action scene itself which in a yeah. way kind of makes it cooler right? that was a lot of the first episode and i really yeah. liked it it was like i oh. was like for me like compared to the other disney flesh shows i think this had maybe the strongest first episode agreed agreed i think yeah so, i loved loki as well yeah i think yeah they, re- they really got their footing as they're sort of developing because yeah. like in reality they're all probably made like weeks apart of each other other than moon knight because like because they're very close in they release. were they were pretty I, well plus covid too, was, yeah, yeah yeah so like with like wandavision it had like a, a good start like like i enjoyed yeah. the first episode i love where it built up captain america i was like it was okay it was like oh falcon it, yeah, yeah. Falcon, falcon, it was a good episode but the problem is the show's called falcon winter soldier the first episode ends they haven't even seen each other <laughs> i don't have <laughs> a problem with that i don't mind funny. that too much it's just that it just wasn't like i'd rank it lower Loki was like really great start. I was Loki, definitely like that was, interested. That's the one episode, first episode, which I said, okay, like this is the only that and Moon Knight are like the strongest for me. I would say. What if was just meh? I did not like that first episode. That was it was the same movie as the I first think Avenger, it, but worse. Yeah, like, I think that would have the the, the roughest and uh, then, start. Yeah, Moon Knight. Moon yeah. Knight. Yeah. But uh, I agree completely. I think the first episode was amazing. Yeah, and I loved I love how that sprinkled into the second episode. What I will say is. Um, and I think you agree with me when yeah. the show kind of starts to pivot more on the, the quest. quest side, the adventure uh, the, side. The Indiana Jones esque. Oh, we gotta yeah. find this in the sarcophagus and this and that. I was a bit like, yeah, it's fine, but I'm not impressed. I I really liked it because of like the whole historical historical element. Like right. it was yeah. Alexander the Great, which was really really cool. The historical stuff I really liked. It's just the quest itself. I just I wasn't. Too, I liked in episode four that I was a bit like of a horror kind of adventure Absolutely. you saw like people getting s- grabbed from behind from the shadows you see something move i'm like that's pretty cool yeah um actually you're speaking of historical stuff um this is the i watch all the uh, marvel shows with my girlfriend and this is the first time ever where <laughs> she actually knew kind of more about the mythology than i did because <laughs> like I, I discovered yeah, yeah I, okay. I discovered through this show that she was actually a, a huge fan of egyptian myth growing up mm-hmm. okay. so i thought that was really awesome and uh, she would kind of point out things to me that i didn't know uh, and I just, I, I just love that. I thought I, I learned something else about her through this, and I just wanted to yeah. say that. Yeah, I, nice. I, I love that hippo goddess. She was, yeah, like she, when, when she, she was she, funny. When she popped in, I'm like, oh my god, it's a talking hippo. <laughs> WTF? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and yeah. she points out like, oh no, this is actually so and so, and I'm like, that's really cool. So I would kind of gain more mm-hmm. knowledge for the first time about a, a Marvel show, not through new rock stars, but actually <laughs> through my girlfriend. I just, which is I, really nice. Yeah. I gotta say, like, shout out to the ending of episode four because that was like, wow, I was yeah. speechless when I watched it. That was an incredible cliffhanger. Just to end the episode on uh, Stephen and Mark screaming at the screen and it cuts. Well, I love that. Another thing too, like it. because the show is taking liberties from the source material mm-hmm. and not adapting it 100. Yeah. percent Like you had told me after that episode ended that oh my god, I think they're going to be going in this direction with this comic book storyline. Yeah, but here in Smallwood, like I was saying before. Exactly. But did you really actually know that it would they would be doing that? No, not necessarily because we, the rest of the show is so. We had gotten like a hint of it in a trailer, and I'm like, oh, maybe they might do it, but I'm like. Mm. I'm going to be honest, I didn't think that's a season one story. Right. And then it ended up being a season one story. Totally so. pulled it off, though, man. Yeah, I was impressed by yeah, it. Yeah, that was, it was great. All yeah. right, so uh, let's talk villains. Well, villain. Arthur Harrow. Yeah, what anything else that you want to say uh, kind of spoiler um, related to him? I liked that he, he served Conchie when he was like a past Moon Knight. Yeah. That was a cool like backstory to him that I really enjoyed. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Other than that, I like like I said before, he, he's perfectly fine. Ethan Hawke was great with the material that he had, but... I just wish he had more to do. Like, imagine if this season was more like the Netflix shows and they made it longer and we get one episode just based off him. We I see thought that would have been cool. As Moon Knight, maybe. Like, that, that's really like, and you see oh, his follower Conchie. Yeah, that would have been great. That'd actually. be insane. Like, Agreed. that'd be so cool. But instead, it's all off screen, like Marvel Studios does a lot. <laughs> yeah, so. if, there is, if there is one takeaway from the show, I think, I think um, we can say that we wish it was a bit longer. Yeah. But I could say that about a lot of the MCU shows, if I not f- all of them. I feel like. It, there are a lot of them are paced like films and that they haven't nailed the TV formula l- yet. Mm-hmm. They're kind of just going for like a, just a really six hour movie instead of like a series. Yeah. But actually, you know, uh, speaking of Arthur Harrow, like I think what's really interesting about that character specifically, like I mentioned before, is uh, his ethical kind of like his, his ethical positionality, mm-hmm. his moral positionality. Yeah. Um, and the one thing that I really wish they did kind of explore more of 
uh, was that connection to Stephen or Mark directly because you know they're dealing with like I said before um, similar themes that, that are found in let's say minority report where is it ethically correct to either imprison someone or in this case m murder someone send them um, to the CGI sky beam send them <laughs> to the CGI sky beam you know uh, for a crime that they did not commit mm -hmm. right. you're just predicting the future right but now by then imprisoning them or killing them again in this case They've ne they're never going to be able to commit that crime. So there's were this they kind really of bad. So were they ever really bad? There's this kind of like moral gray area. And I think that's a really interesting theme. And, you know, I think many people might agree with Harrow in this case, just maybe disagree with some of his methods. But <laughs> conceptually, I think there's something to grab onto there. Uh, what I just the show did wish I what I just wish the show did a little bit better was maybe kind of position Stephen uh, with that because he immediately kind of dismisses um, yeah it's been like uh, you know oh I'm British and I'm bumbling and whatnot and uh, this guy's clearly bad this guy okay this guy's clearly a bad guy but I think that would have been really cool if maybe Stephen was sort of maybe getting tempted to that, uh, at, that at least consider it or at know? least you know you know and then maybe Mark is like on the complete opposite side of that and because I think he that knows the truth yeah right? and they would have played with that duality um, between them a little bit better and I think it would have tied the protagonist better to the uh, to the you know the, 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 the excuse me the, um, the villain <laughs> the villain but the <laughs> Arthur <laughs> but the villain the, struggle wait a minute but the the theme <laughs> no the the <laughs> Matthew, we're really tired. <laughs> you gotta just say it, Mister Knight. <laughs> when they have like a, a thing. connection, no. When they have like a, their motivation, their motivation. Yes. Ah, it there we go. First try. First try. <laughs> so yeah, motivation. Okay. I, you know, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I personally don't mind that he's not really that attached to. Moon Knight, I actually kind of preferred he was sure. like sort of separate. Mm -hmm. Just because it's one, it's a it's a change of pace. Because like you know, most of the villains we've seen usually have some sort of connection, right? Yeah, to the the character. Well, In this case, it's just Harold's just causing chaos. Well, he's mm -hmm. gonna cause chaos, and it's up to Mark Spector and reluctantly Stephen Grant to stop it's, him. It's funny that you say that because the original scripts for the show are they had considered putting Bushman as the villain. And Who's that? <laughs> not familiar with that character, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well he's he's basically Moon Knight's Joker, I would say like he's ah. Moon Knight's main enemy, like it's Bushman. Very good. But <laughs> what's he called Bushman? That's a pretty it's a pretty guys, provocative <laughs> name a gnarly ass name. Guys he gets name dropped in the show. Like, don't look at me like I'm crazy. What episode was that? What? I don't remember that. He's the one who kills Mark Spector, and that's why he goes to Contru statue. They didn't say Bushmaster. Yeah, he's Bushman. His old partner, Bushman. Oh, that's pretty cool. Some world building. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Jeez, guys, uh, watch it with subtitles next time. <laughs> Actually, this is the one. Uh, this is the one Marvel show I didn't watch with subtitles. <laughs> there you go. But Bushman, they were gonna put him as the main villain, but they oh, said he's yeah. too similar to Killmonger. You're right, so they instead, did. I remember that yeah. now. Yeah, you're right. I it's, didn't know this. <laughs> this is yeah. new to me. Basically, instead of Bushman, they picked Arthur Harrow, which if you guys read a Moon Knight comic, no, he's appeared in one issue or two issues. He's a useless character. He's so basically like, an original villain. So like El Muerto. It, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> he's exactly like El Muerto. <laughs> but as long as Arthur Harrow didn't get his own movie, you know, because how disastrous would that be? Not yet. Well, thank God Sony Pictures doesn't own the, own the rights to, uh, but, to Arthur so Harrow. They basically created an original villain, and I thought they did a pretty good job with it. Yeah. Like, Another thing about Arthur Harrow, I like the glass in the shoes in episode one. That I was, that was yeah, what is that about? Weird. I don't is it know. Is he's like punishing himself? Because it's like, I think something of like that. sins? Because he, he you know talks what? a lot yes. about punishment yeah. and like, you know, the sins he's committed in the past. So do you think it's, it's part of that? I think he wants his scales to balance stuff like that. Something yeah. like, you know what? I think that's exactly it. So thank you, Paolo. Ma yeah, no, you know, because I've read a bunch of Moon Knight. I know yeah. ethical dilemmas, or, or, religion and stuff like that. Yeah. I know it good. Totally. Or maybe he's just a hypocrite, but who knows? <laughs> but, uh, but I yeah, gotta, I got to also say this. I kind of don't like that he got killed in an um, after credit scene. I, I kind of dug it. It, it was because like it was an, unexpected. It felt like an afterthought, like... I, I think that scene should have been the final scene of the show. I, I, I don't think hate, you needed to make it a, a mid credits. I hate when Marvel Studios puts the ending of the movie in the mid credits. Oh, I think it's stupid all and the dumb. time, man. Far from home, I'm looking at you. Even Bla uh, to be honest, even with Black Panther, I think the whole uh, United Nations scene. Yeah. 
Like okay, you could have that as a mid credit scene because the other ending was at the basketball court with the kids. It's a nice hard cut credits. Yeah, but it's just like that's something so like kind of important to me. Like I I wouldn't save that just for mid credits. The Bucky thing works as the after credit scene, but like that one, that's like the real ending. Yeah. Here's the thing, though. Think about it, Leas. Jake Lockley is doing it secretly because you know Mm -hmm. as for the ending of the show. Where's his mustache? Mark (laughs) Mark (laughs) Spector and Stephen Grant basically. Um, they, they should, give up the power, their powers. They, they, yeah, they, they want do, Moon Knight. They uh, they Contra, want, go take a hike. <laughs> yeah, they want Contra to release them. Yeah, but then you know, not, but he still has it. He tricked them, mm-hmm. so it kind of works in that sense where it's like they don't know he's dead. So their ending ends with the show, and Jake Lockley sort of beginning starts with that. I get that, but, but, that, but it's just gonna be the ending of the show. Because but, but when you have a scene that's so really important, and that most people actually back out of their Disney mm-hmm. Plus and don't even bother to. The average viewer, let's say, maybe not the diehard because Marvel fan. Let's be but honest, every episode does not have a mid credit. Correct, scene. exactly. Also, I do feel like the actual hard cut to, to black that we do get felt very abrupt, like you were saying in it the non spoiler section. Yeah. I, I think it's a cool gag how he's still, you know, tied to the bed and whatnot, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, I just felt like that was kind of. Uh, that, uh, I, I, it finished and, like, that's it. And then I was waiting for the mid credit scene, like, there's the ending I wanted. Yeah. Okay. Jake Lockley needs a mustache. That's it. <laughs> I've been dying to say this. Yeah. Jake Lockley needs a mustache. I already no. said it. What was your favorite episode? I have a very clear favorite five. episode. <laughs> five. What is it, Paul? Uh, I'll be real. I kind of see it as one big thing. I don't really have a favorite episode. Fine. Everything You're was boring. Very good. You're no You're fine. Trying to Anthony, say five. So anyway, five. Look, no, five? you know what? I will say I liked episode six. Really? Okay. As your yeah. favorite? Oh, okay. You like good. CGI uh, Ethan Hawke fighting CGI Oscar Isaac. I think it's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. You know, CG- having more CGI is great. Um, no, but seriously... Um, what I, because I'm just gonna say this, because you guys are probably gonna talk about it way more and mm-hmm. go more in depth. For me, I liked episode six the best because we really got to see that full story of like on the sands with the reeds. Yeah, sure. when Mark Spector sees like the afterlife in a mm-hmm. sense, and he had and he chose to go back. I really like that because that's a huge thing to do. Mm-hmm. Like but- we. Um, I see. Even like I was saying before, like even just seeing like Mister Knight finally be like a character and not a gag. He was like confident in himself more. Like you know, yeah. like, with the jacket he was like, yeah, like I like that. It's it's great. And I also liked you know the moment between Stephen Grant and um, Mark Spector. It was really mm-hmm. nice. It was a sweet thing. It was like two bros type deal. It was kind of like Oscar it kind of feels out. like you know his brother guys being bros you know no no like i think like genuinely i think stephen grant is also kind of meant to be in some ways his brother of course and sort of mm-hmm. him going back to save him is like him trying to go back to save his brother from yeah. drowning yeah. in the cave i yeah. think that was yeah absolutely i think that's a very and good point then on top of that the fight was really cool because i just liked watching the dead bird fight a big crocodile <laughs> <laughs> and uh it was pretty sick <laughs> And uh, yeah, the fight with Scarlet Scarab, which we're gonna yeah. definitely talk about a bit, and um, Moon Knight and Mister Knight just fighting those guys, like it was really cool. I was like, this is like thrilling for me. Well, Fair. speaking of Layla, actually. Uh, well, let's, well, you guys probably want to talk about you know episode well, five first. Uh, well, yeah, we'll talk about episode five since it happens first. But episode five, I had the feeling when they sh- when they showed him in the asylum in four, I'm like. I think they're gonna show the origin in five, and they did. And I'm mm-hmm. like, this is awesome. It was more brutal than I expected. Well, I didn't think. I dead didn't kids is awesome Disney. for you. <laughs> it is. <laughs> also, I'm not gonna lie. The yeah. asylum stuff was probably my favorite part Same of the here. entire yeah. series because it was just too. yeah, me too. Weirdly fascinating because it was like because you know how Tawaret says like oh yeah everyone perceives the sort of afterlife or like the purgatory differently they even talk about like the black panther afterlife mm-hmm. that's a cool that was shout that, out. that was cool where it's like yeah. for him he saw an mm-hmm. asylum back yeah, cool. oh episode and 5 he sees all the mark specter sees all the people he's killed mm-hmm. and he's and steven grant's like oh my god remember all the people like yeah i do and it's like it's some touching stuff i found like especially every flashback in that episode was just some wow. were tough to watch yeah. i thought that episode by itself was as emotionally powerful if not maybe even more well no i would say on the same level for me as as let's say wandavision yeah oh which yeah. was a show that really really stuck with me here i think in the finale of that show some things story some story beats were a little bit uneven and, <laughs> yeah uh but yeah. I, I think th- this this one episode episode five was very very powerful and I, it was also something that i wish kind of peacemaker was more of <laughs> 
<laughs> Peacemaker review today. <laughs> <laughs> but but really, like you know, I I I felt like mm -hmm. if you want to really deal with the the past trauma of a child and 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 their, and their troubled relationship with a parent, I think this show does it in spades. I think yeah. it's it's yeah. remarkably it's it's brilliant. But it does it a lot better. So than, much uh, better. Yeah. Even seeing how it played into a DID and what it's like. It really yeah. And and when you it's well done. even with Jake Lockley, like when you really think of uh, think of it from this point of view, it's like Mark created Stephen to put up with the trauma mm -hmm. being exerted upon him from his mother, but Stephen didn't know about the mom basically <laughs> like hating him, which yeah. means that all the abuse was then being targeted directly to Jake, which helps explain no, why to Mark. he uh, <laughs> no to, to I, Jake because no. Mark would create Stephen right. To, to, to get away from the trauma, but Steven doesn't remember what the trauma is. So yeah, the one who was getting abused was Jake the whole time. No, it's Mark. Buddy. No, I think it was Jake. <laughs> no, 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 it was Mark. And, and, and I think Steve it was Jake. No, because he literally specifically remembers and he's no. like, no, 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 don't go in there. You, you, know, you know what you're going to see. No, of course. And he wants to protect Steve from seeing that. Yes, but I, I think, look, I think Mark would, of course, still get abused at because the beginning of everything. The thing, yeah. I like where you're going. I would say it's another sort of split in the sense of like you have mark he created steve right to be sort of the the happier side like you know like the person that's more well adjusted mm -hmm. of course like well adjusted yeah yeah of course but then yeah jake is kind of the result of the the abuse but instead of sort of taking it on himself he sort of internalizes it and projects it through jake instead. yeah i would say it's more like that than jake getting abused because it's very clear in episode five that it's mark going through because even then like he's like what happened in that room he's like I don't like, I don't want to, don't make me relive it. He's like, don't do it. You know it's him. So yeah, like, okay, you're, you're, you're right in a sense. It's just that it was very much, Mark was getting all the abuse. And then Steven and Jake were results of it. Yeah. Okay. Just one yeah, went in but one direction and one went in the other. In, okay, in yeah, our defense, sense. we don't really know Jake's yet. We're going to see in a season two maybe. Or that, what? And we're also not like <laughs> experts, medical experts. So yeah. like. Yeah. I, I really don't think uh, yeah. we can really comment on. Oh yeah, no, this is what this is what happens with the DID, you know. Yeah. Well, he is sprinkled throughout the show as the director has. That is that, that was show, cool. Show yeah. Yeah. Especially so thinking back, I'm really like I said before, I'm really looking forward to revisiting the show and watching mm -hmm. it uh, oh, for, for a sure. second viewing because I'm going to pick out two? a lot more. Yeah, and especially for season two. Well, season two. Before then, two? I want to talk about Layla. <laughs> Because I think Layla was a really, really great. Oh um, yeah, when the show went character. woke, <laughs> woke. Be quiet. I think <laughs> she was the a Scarlet really Scarab. My favorite hero was a man in the comics. Now I can't watch this show. It'll be all your fault. No, 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 no! You can't. I won't do it. I won't do it. You can't pay me. You can't pay me. I won't do it. Did you see? There's been a lot of like, well, a lot, like. There's, you know, the usual suspects were complaining, saying how it's like, oh, too woke, or it's like, you know, they turned uh, yeah. Moon Knight into this, and like, but, but it's also, so stupid but because also, she's in it for literally 15 minutes as Scarlet Scarab. But also, uh, who cares about those people? Well, also, I think it helps put a stamp on her own character. Yeah. I thought she was mm -hmm. a very, very compelling character, and a, a side character and love interest who actually had depth and was very relevant to the plot and didn't just feel like a damsel in, dist in distress. I, I liked But Gravis, she had more than like 10 minutes of screen time. <laughs> she, it's clearly just a feminist agenda. Oh, man. <laughs> it's... Look, I liked her character. I thought she was well done. She's basically Marlene from the comics, and that's okay. But, you know... I, Scarlet Scarab, I think, like, that costume was cool. It was, oh, it was really cool. It was know, basically Falcon's costume. No, it was basically Wonder Woman 84, but done right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say, but that's I actually, that I like the, I like that costume from '84. And I'm more. Th I'm talking. Okay, I mean, when she looked like <laughs> Goldar from Power Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> that's kind of what the comic one looks. Like. I'm talking more about the character in general. You know, like sure. saving kids in Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> she actually did it well. <laughs> you know, it's better than one in '84. Enough champagne to fill the Nile. To fill the Nile. I love Death on the Nile. And enough champagne to fill the Nile. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh, we're not talking about that. Okay, right, we're talking about Moon Knight. <laughs> I want to talk about the Poirot uh, Kenneth Branagh film. No one cares about the only hey. Kenneth Branagh thing we're talking about is Thor and the beginning of Infinity War, which he narrated, <laughs> and Walking with Dinosaurs. Because I was watching that years. last night. <laughs> he narrates throughout the whole thing. It's nice. His wow. voice is so soothing. I wish it, it was uh, David Attenborough, but who did no, that? he does. He's doing the new one that's coming out. 
Oh, cool. uh, yeah. But anyway. honest to God, Kenneth Branagh, amazing voice. He does have that. Amazing I agree. Voice. Anyway, back to Moon Knight, Layla. <laughs> so, yeah, Layla. Just overall, I, I liked the character, and I like the way her story wrapped, and I'm excited mm-hmm. to see more. One hundred percent. So, speaking of seeing more, what do you think? Uh, what do you think? The you know, what are some of the directions that the show could take? Yeah, I have no idea. I didn't. I don't know Moon Knight, so this could go literally Anthony, in any what direction. Do you think? <laughs> Look, the direction I really want is I really hope they kind of go back to just Mark Spector, and we see his adventures with Layla. It'd be cool to see like a flashback episode at least of like him on an adventure with Layla, just sure, like that. Okay. Like back when they're actually married, you know. There's there's so many cool Moon Knight comics like that, like that I would love to see. Okay. But, but him as not as Moon Knight or as no, Moon as Knight? Moon Knight, like so, when he so first becomes Moon Knight. So season two is in the past. So they're. I'm not saying the whole season. Wait, well, saying thing, like, like a flashback episode or something. I'm saying like I want to see segments of his past more. Like I want. So to you want it to be like Boba it. Fett, or do you want to do it like? No, I want it to be good. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> I mean like. In but terms if it would be like, like Boba Fett, then you would get four episodes of that. And then no, we I, get an episode of Blade <laughs> in the middle of it. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean more like, um, is it? Do you want that past to tie into the main story, or do you want it to? Like, is it separate? Like, how, how do you want it to work? If well, I feel like there's a story to be told in the past. Tell the story they want to tell. If it ties into the current one, that'd be awesome. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. Yeah, Look, but then what's the point of doing it if, it's, if it doesn't? Well, listen, if you're throwing... Yeah, exactly. If you're throwing Fair in a, a, a flashback episode in a, in a show that, again, is probably going to only be six episodes, if we're even oh. getting a season two. We probably will. I, yeah, yeah, they, I think they, they kind of... Because so. Marvel, they did that thing on Twitter where it's like they wrote series finale, then they deleted it and put season... But okay. then again, maybe they might even do a movie. You never know. Maybe. But regardless, like, you know, if, if, if you're inserting an entire episode or a massive segment of an episode uh, with a flashback segment and, and it's just and it ties, <laughs> does nothing of, of yeah. relevance for the actual main yeah, plot. Then <laughs> I, then okay, well, look, it should have if unless you're doing the whole seasons of flashback, then OK. But yeah, it should have some thematic resonance with the story. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, but don't make it boring like Book of Boba Fett did. So. No, Book of Boba Fett, they didn't maximize its potential. We're always going back to that show, man. Just, it was episode one, the origin. One, the origins of our... We gotta our let it point. go, like, you know. <laughs> it's it's the origin point of the RPCU, the Reference Point Cinematic Universe. Boy. We're more like a television show, but yeah, I agree. <laughs> Anyways, but yeah. point. What else would I want to see? Look, obviously Jake Lockley. I want to see the, this guy. I want to see him drive a cab. I need to see this. <laughs> see him patrolling the streets. <laughs> the mundane what, what? Yeah. Go grocery shopping. <laughs> you know, taxi driver, just a modern day remake. Did he always <laughs> have a, a Spanish uh, accent? Never. So <laughs> this is yeah. Hundred percent Oscar. Well, Isaac I think thing. it's it's an Oscar Isaac yeah, thing then, 100%. right? Yeah, exactly. So that's he, cool. he was more like a New York cab guy, you know. Yeah, yeah, okay. So. Oh yes, I love a, a Spanish man named Jake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to. <laughs> but also, you know, they're probably gonna put Moon Knight if I have to guess in the Midnight Suns. That's eventually. What's that? <laughs> The Midnight Sun. Wow. Okay. These guys really don't read anything. Oh, I can't read. You know this. Why would you point it out? Pictures. He's trying. Okay. Well, the Midnight Suns are so many like iterations of them that it's like it's basically a supernatural team. Oh, that's kind of cool. So nice. you're gonna get like Blade, Ghost Rider. If they want, they could even put the Punisher in there. Like, I'm sold already. <laughs> <laughs> you said you said Ghost Rider, Punisher. Sometimes I'm sold. Put, uh, this is gonna be a deep cut, but Hannibal King. You guys remember Blade Three? I know Hannibal movie? Burris. No, not Hannibal Burris. Oh. He was in Homecoming. But you guys remember, you guys seen Blade Trinity, that gar- uh, bad movie? Ryan Reynolds. Exactly. It's his character. Okay. He's oh, really? He's part of the Midnight Suns a lot of times. Awesome. You can even put Morbius, but he's suffering from Morbius fever, so it might have scheduling conflicts. Yeah, yeah. True. true. So, point is, it's a supernatural team, and there's so much potential with it. You put Black Knight also, Blade. Yeah, I'm getting... Uh, Black on. Knight would be cool. Yeah, I'm getting Blade the vibe on. that uh, that's probably the direction they're going. 100%. Yeah. You put Doctor Strange... Even him, awesome stuff. Very good. It's, I'm actually kind of hyped for that. Yeah, I think that sounds great. But Oscar Isaac has also said that, well, I think there's also something to do with Marvel Studio contracts, but he's not actually signed for a sequel or a season two. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I think it's because now Marvel, like, it's not because they, they don't like doing those giant contracts anymore. I think they always do one by one. Right. Right. But always keep that in mind that maybe they're never going to follow it up. True. Would that be disappointing? I think so. But <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of hyped. You said Ghost Rider, Punisher. Yeah. Blade, that's already a dream team for me. Right. Yeah, for sure. It's they're cool characters. That's what did you call them again? The Midnight Suns. Okay, because I was thinking of uh, the Marvel Knights book. The Marvel well, Knights. Well, Mar- 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 Marvel Knights, isn't that? Wasn't that just yeah, more the, of yeah. a? Um, but that was more just like that was a like reboot of like a, a label. That wasn't yeah. exactly a team. Okay. But when they did a team, it wasn't like nothing. But it's much. like it's we a lot are of those the char- Marvel Knights. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like a lot of those characters. I was just thinking of it's, that title. You know, but you're not far off. I get yeah, yeah, thinking, yeah. Because it's like. So. 
they're going for darker. They're not doing like the Avengers. Mm. Oh, we're quipping every two seconds. Hey, look, we just blew up a city. Let's laugh about it. Yeah, right, you right. mean uh, uh, Mr. Knight, though? Yeah, well, now he's more serious, but in the books he'd be serious, but you know. That's why. Yeah. Thoughts on season two? What about you? Uh, honestly, I didn't really have any thoughts, but what you just said was like, yeah, it's selling. It's, it, I'm, I'm sold. So, yeah. For I like me, that. season two, I think would be a great idea to introduce the Midnight Suns, where you <laughs> would do. You what? Know, Ghost I don't Rider. know what that is. Please tell me more. <laughs> okay. What is that? You know what? I actually think that's a pretty go- good idea. Marvel Studios, hire <laughs> Hire this man. <laughs> As we have watched you take our beloved Yankees and reduce them to a laughing stock, all for the glorification of your massive ego. Hire this man. <laughs> Get ready for subpar content <laughs> taken by other people. Wow, what are you, Lucasfilm? <laughs> Yikes. Oh my god. Hey, on, that, on that note, uh, you think where does it rank? Right? I'll say, where does it rank with all the other Marvel shows for you? Oh, oh man. Uh, I'll, I'll start. Just because I might as well just throw this out because I already sure. started. Mm-hmm. I would say this is definitely uh, the top for me. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a bold statement. Yeah, because it was bold just so, it was so new. And s- s- like there's n- I had no expectations going in. True. And it really like impressed me. It really did a lot for me. Then I would say it's Loki. Yeah. Okay. WandaVision. Okay. Then Cap and uh, Winter Soldier. Okay. What if, not even? Oh, yeah, what if. What if, (laughs) What if, yeah. Yeah, what if, way at the bottom. Uh, This is kind of an impossible question for me because I think, oh, you missed Hawkeye, by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so. You know what? This entire time, guys, we've been talking about Disney Plus shows, and you said them before, and I'm like, I know we're missing one, but what is it? And it was Hawkeye. (laughs) Okay, so. um, (laughs) Enjoyed it, though. (laughs) Moon Knight. Let's take it from the top. Loki. Yes. WandaVision. Sure. Hawkeye. Okay. Captain Winter Soldier. What if? What if it's so bad that a show he forgot about was put up on the <laughs> Wow. Uh, anyway. It wasn't a what if was bad. It was just like, there's so much. I find like it was weird. Sh- yeah. Doc- this Doctor Strange episodes were amazing. And everything else I was like, okay, it's not bad. Like either. like the Killmonger, Killmonger one was just weird. Like they could have done something really cool with it. Yeah. But they just went in a weird direction. Why, like, why did they make him connect to Tony Stark? Instead of yeah. doing a Black Panther, what if they did it with mm-hmm. Tony Stark? I'm like, stupid, whatever. We're not talking about what if. Grab us, rank your shows. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what if it. they made a better show? <laughs> Literally. It, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like I was saying. It's kind of an impossible question for me. Um, I, I love them all really very very much. Uh, what if would be my least favorite? Um, if you can't rank them, how would how about this? Rank it in terms of what would you rewatch the most till the to the least? Well, rewatch the most. I feel like. Moon Knight in the sense because like I said before you could probably pick up on multiple things mm-hmm. that you missed uh, out on your first viewing uh, through subsequent viewings mm-hmm. so I think that's great um, I could s- I honestly I could really see myself rewatching WandaVision as well yeah. just because it emotionally I feel like I connect to that show the most mm-hmm. Loki 2 uh, Hawkeye, Hawkeye I feel maybe it might be the one that I would come back to the least <laughs> poor um, Jeremy Renner <laughs> His no, app. but uh, again, it has nothing to do <laughs> and with... this is app? <laughs> uh, Google if you don't want to talk about Jeremy Renner app. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I, and I really, I think Falcon and the Winter Soldier gets way too a much lot hate. of, way too much hate. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't really know why. Right. I think thematically that might actually be one of the strongest shows, but at least top three, I think mm-hmm. thematically. Yeah, I would say top. so. It's got a, r- it has honestly some of the better moments. Like For Falcon sure. actually taking up the mantle was like, I was like, I honestly yes. found it had one of the stronger last episodes, if anything. I know a lot of people didn't like it, but yeah. for me, yeah. it really worked that last episode. Yeah. More than WandaVision, per se. Yeah, WandaVision, it was just such a big fumble, especially when you look at the direction it went and how she ties in. Yeah. It just feels like, wow, they really just kind of decided at the last minute, you know, to yeah. do this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how I feel. What about you, Anthony? Okay, so number one, mm. I think it's always, it's not always, but for now, it's still Loki. Okay. It's that that was a strong show. It good was, choice, man. It's a mm-hmm. good choice. To me, like none of the episodes missed for me. They were all hits. Yeah, they Whereas were. Whereas for every other show, they always had a couple misses. True. Number two, I'm gonna put Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like it, not perfect. The Asylum was enough to put on number two because I love everything with the Asylum. Oh, that, yeah. so as much. an episode, it might be one of the top yeah. two or three best episodes. And it, just and like, episode, yeah. Agreed. And like I said, it's one of the stronger starts to the Disney Plus show. True. Also. True. Three. I'm going to go with WandaVision. 
and inter but it's very interchangeable for me for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Okay. Because I really like Falcon and Winter Soldier a lot. Me too. And that's one of the shows where I actually felt like the six episode format worked perfect for it. And I didn't feel like I wanted more from it. True. Yeah, I think that was that's, one. Of, yeah, yeah. So that's why I could. It's like give or take. It's like either or you could put for me. Yeah. Okay. Hawkeye, I enjoyed. Completely fumbled the bag at the end with the Kingpin and Echo. And like, I just, I was so disappointed with that stuff. Yeah, that the like finale was very, very lackluster. And yeah. Yeah. So, you know. And then last and certainly least, what if? The Doctor Strange episode is amazing. But the rest of the show, I didn't really... I, I don't see the point as to why they have to make what if tie in all at the end. Right. There's there's no point. The what if comics once never really did that. And two, like, it's, it's unnecessary to me. To say the right. least. But more importantly, what do you guys think? Please comment below if you're watching on the YouTube video uh, what your ranking of the shows are. And again, like we said before, what are your general thoughts on Moonlight? Did you like it? Did you not like it? And guys, I know you're going to put Daredevil because everyone loves Daredevil. <laughs> yeah. but we're talking about Disney plus Marvel Studios. Daredevil is not Marvel Studios. Daredevil would probably be number one. But in Dare most people's it, case, it, yeah. Daredevil is number one for me. Like, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just so. those four episodes with the Punisher are like the best Marvel I've ever seen almost. <laughs> oh, yeah. No joke. Yeah. So anyway, I think that's a really great place to, to wrap up. I think that's the show. That's the show. Uh, so <laughs> I think doing? Paulo anyway, is having a seizure off. Thank him. you for watching our episode. <laughs> oh, God. Remember? You're not British. <laughs> what? What do you mean? What do you mean I'm not British? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Paulo's <laughs> British. Now. This What's was not mean? planned. Well, I'm not Paulo. Anyway, thank that you for watching. And uh, remember to like and subscribe. Follow us on social media. We're at the Ref Point Podcast. And remember to support your local uh, bookstores. I don't know why he's talking like that. He's basically just whispering and pretending he's British. Well, guys, I'm not pretending. <laughs> yes, you're pretending. Don't forget to support your local comic book stores. Thanks, guys. See you later. Good night. <laughs>